Okay, we're getting ready to dissect some earthworms, and I wanted to show you what some of the anatomical structures look like under a dissecting microscope. All the following images were shot at about 20 times magnification. First, uh, let's look at some external anatomy, starting with the setae, which are stiff bristles made of chitin. These are found on the lateral ventral portion of the earthworm. Usually you can't see the setae, but you can feel them. And note how I'm brushing against the setae with my probe, and I can feel a very stiff bristle. Once you find them, note how they occur in pairs on either side of the ventral surface. Okay, so now let's look at the anterior end of the worm. And of course we can find the mouth right here. But we're going to count down about 15 segments or so. When we get there, we'll see this kind of subtle opening, which is one of the sperm ducts. So sperm leaves this duct whenever the earthworm mates with another earthworm. Now, just anterior to this duct is an opening to the seminal receptacles, but that's really hard to see. Now, when the sperm leaves the sperm duct, it flows along the sperm groove, which you can see right here running to the posterior from the sperm duct. Now we're going to look at some internal anatomy. We've already carefully dissected the earthworm and opened it up, and we're looking at the anterior end. The first structure that's pointed out here is the nerve cord, which is this whitish cord which ends in the brain. Now the brain is very small, and you can't see it in this image, probably because I think I stuck a pin through it. But if you're careful, you might be able to see the very small brain at the end of this cord. Next, we're going to move toward the posterior of the earthworm and point out the structures as we see them. The first structure is the pharynx, which is just posterior to the mouth. Now down from this area, we see these large glandular organs called seminal vesicles. This is where sperm is produced. And just anterior to these are the small globe-shaped seminal receptacles, which is where sperm from another earthworm can be stored. Now underneath and around all these structures are these tubular dark organs called aortic arches. These act like hearts to pump blood. And as you move things around, you can see the shape of them. And there's about five pairs of these. Now as we move down in the digestive system, we see the crop, which is thin-walled and it's used to store food. And then just posterior to this, is the gizzard, which is much tougher, and it's used to grind food. And then finally, exiting the gizzard, we see the long intestine, which runs all the way down to the anus. Finally, we move posterior to the gizzard, and notice this dark blood vessel running along the dorsal surface of the intestine. This is the dorsal vessel, which returns blood to the anterior end of the earthworm. Along the sides, we see the septa, which we cut through when we were dissecting the earthworm. These separate the segments of the earthworm. Now, if we carefully move the intestine to the side, we can see the small whitish nerve on the ventral surface, which is called the ventral nerve cord. Now, the dark tube next to the nerve cord is the ventral blood vessel. If you look in between the septa here, you can see a little skinny tube that seems to be connected to the outside of the worm, and that's going to be a nephridium. And so you ought to be able to find a couple of these within every segment. Here you can see I sliced open the intestine parallel to the dorsal blood vessel so we can look inside. And when we pry it open, you can see the structure of the tiflosol. And that's that structure on the, the dorsal surface of the inner intestine that's got a lot of surface area.